he can just let it fly right now. These tires are up to it. BP Racing Fuels acceleration zone, and he has gone, but again, got Sacker this time much closer. He is, but he's immediately having a defend from Ian James, who gets a run down into turn one, pokes his nose in there. And all this is going to do is help Lawson Archer back. Well, the minute Ian moves over like that, Gottsacker will start to faint just a little bit. Now he's tightened his radius up, which means a little slower out. It just dominoes, doesn't it? By faint, you mean? Yes. Yeah. 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 He's over. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, this pressure's too much. I'm out. <laughs> you can see the gap immediately. This will take the pressure off Archer back. He can just hit his own marks down in the turn four. James now does get a run. He's got a little bit more straightaway speed than that Janetta we've seen earlier in the race when he made some moves on his uh, Harry's teammate Parker Chase. And look at Kurtz, GTSA, AM driver right there in fourth, hounding. And what a story it would be, you know. I wonder how hard he'll push at this point because sometimes if you make that move and finish on the overall podium. Suddenly you get advanced into the uh, higher That's level of class. True, yeah. So yeah. top three. Yeah. You might say, yeah, I want to win a championship here, so maybe I'll just uh, sit here in third. But I'll tell you, once you get into the uh, backside of this track, and I mean, really, it's like two different tracks from the exit of the carousel all the way into the S's. That whole dynamic of this track different than from the S's all the way around. And you can see Harry is right back on Ian James, but now you get to the parts of the track where the straights get a little bit longer. This is where Ian excels. Yes. And he can drive too, but uh, certainly the straightaway is oh, his yeah. uh, friend right now in terms of the uh, horsepower that he's got. And so look at this. a good run. And Nate Stacy has had a good run here. He's used these restarts, done a nice job, and now finds himself up into seventh, keeping in mind that at the start of the race, he was back in the 14th spot. Look at this side-by-side -side action. Parky and Chase. Look at that. Chase wisely Parky does the over-under there. That was nice by Parker Chase. Not getting involved with Stacy. He had enough room to make that move stick. Very nice driving. And I wonder if that moment for Martin Parkey going into the uh, keyhole there is that extra weight on that car. You, you, you're not used to it. You're still thinking of how it used to drive. A little bit too much speed in and you can't get it. It's an adjustment, yeah. you know, and uh, he said that to me yesterday. He said, you know, I like what they're doing and try to change the dynamic, but it really does affect the car tremendously. It's not quite the nimble thing that it was. You love the fact he's a bit more competitive on the straights, uh, but yeah. <laughs> there's a give and take in this game. Ah, uh, hear that thunder of that V8. That is that is a, a car you know it's coming when it's coming at you here, and it also is carrying our Eibach suspension cam on that car. And on this track, the pavement changes up and over the blind brows and the like. It, 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 it needs to be effective, doesn't it? It does. You're trying to maintain that contact pass when you have a huge elevation change like you have here at Mid Ohio. It really uh, puts a lot of uh, pressure on the engineer, I think, as well as the suspension <laughs> system to get it right. Well, in this track, I mean, there are other tracks that have more actual elevation change, but I don't think there's any place that has the abrupt elevation change here where you're up and down and up and Yeah, it just pulls away from yeah. it. Especially, I love like uh, coming out of madness. You know, you're apexing right over a uh, hilltop. Yep. You know, yeah, turn uh, turn five and turn nine here is really uh, got to get the wheels pointed in the right direction. <laughs> That's for sure. So auction box lead right now, two and a half seconds clear. James, who's still right there with Gottsacker in his mirrors, then Kurtz and fourth leading Am. And here's the margin. There's Lawson, and there's that battle for second. And the gap back to Kurtz in fourth. Just as we saw in uh, qualifying, everyone's lap times are getting quicker as this race goes on. As we said, it's effectively a 25-minute sprint race here this afternoon versus, uh, you know, the 50 minutes. Right. So we're seeing fast lap times right now. Lawson Archer makes last lap the fastest of the day at 128.6. James at 129.2. Gottsacker at 129.5. They're the only guys under the 130 bracket. It's a pretty good pace for late in the race, but it's exactly the reason you talked about. We talk about the sweeps, you know, yeah. it's, it's all about, you know, as we said, if you win the first day, I mean, you've got a fast car, and typically if you've got a fast car, you would have done a quick lap. That sets up your day two. That's the way these weekends work, but it would be unbelievable if we were our sixth uh, event of the championship and see another sweep here this weekend, but oh, a long way to go. What are the odds on that? Yeah. A 128.6 compares to a 128 flat set. 2015 for the fast race lap 
in the Sin R1 GT4 cars here. So uh, this is going to be a big moment. And, let, and again, not just giving it to Lawson yet. Things can happen here even with just five minutes to go. Um, but for this team to finally get a win in the Chevy Camaro GT4, you know, that car has already seen a win in, in another category here this season. So the team won't get the honor of bringing that mark and this chassis its first win. But they're talking, and when I talked to Ray Sorensen, he said, he, he said, you're right. He said, we would have loved to have gotten the first win globally. We can't do that. Now our job is to bring them the first championship. Yeah, and uh, there is crossover, even though they're different series with different ties. There's still a crossover inf of information with right. Pratt and Miller being involved with these programs. So uh, that enables both teams to uh, move forward. And, uh, you know, the unique thing is when we look at GT3 cars in our GT Championship and the GT4 platform here is that as quick as these cars are on the track, right. they're actually detuned yeah. uh, street cars. I mean, it's just phenomenal. Uh, the, the street car performance that people are able to go into their show and buy from Chevy. Yeah, I mean, the absolute performance that they can do. And, of course, they're all reined in as part of that balance of performance uh, to make them all race with each other. Just got word that the team car to Oshibach, not a surprise, kind of figured this was coming. We'll get a stop and hold as well for uh, incident responsibility in that uh, crash up at the keyhole for Tony Gable. So he'll have a little stop and hold in the pits for a little bit. And uh, meanwhile, Lawson, the margin now up to just over three seconds. So every lap, he's just tweaking it away a little yeah, bit Yeah, and I'll tell you what, I think it's still up for grabs. I think the victory is certainly going Lawson's way. But looking at these fast lap times, both James and Gossack, they're only three-tenths slower on that last lap. So maybe can someone lay a fast lap down here in the last couple of laps? Be interesting to see. And again, uh, who might join Lawson up on the front row or take pole away. So Tony comes in, and actually it looks like he's just... Head behind the wall, Jeff. Yeah, Tony Gables brings his Black Dog Camaro down, decides that, you know, the damage is too much out there. He did that reconnaissance lap, and then with the penalty, go ahead and retire the car. Go good tomorrow, get that Black Dog crew started on repairing that Camaro. I think that's probably a smart call, obviously. He'll probably be a little frustrated. Uh, you know, that's not the way Tony Gables races. Well, uh, looking at their board as well, he's six yeah. laps behind the next yeah. guy in terms of anyone still uh, out there competing, so he's not going to make up that time even if someone... Break. Get stranded right now. Yeah, that's a good point. So, so Lawson could do lap time wise here. 28 9, so a little bit slower. And James and Gossack are in the 29 bracket as well. So maybe that 128 6 will still stick for fast lap of the day and potential pull for tomorrow for Lawson Osher back right now. If I'm looking at the monitor right, the only other guys in the 128 range with Lawson is James and Gottsacker. And between the two of them, it's exceptionally close. It's a good little so, battle here for that runner-up position right now. A couple of laps to go. Boy, these two guys have eased away now from George Kurtz. And I think Kurtz has realized, you know, I could go up and try and race for an overall podium, but I'm well clear of everybody I'm racing in the AMP category championship. So just ease back and bring this car home, get some points, and have a real healthy race car for tomorrow's race as we are on the final lap. And he should assume the lead because he came into this race only three points right. behind Tony Gables. He's now in the paddock. Yep, so it's a big day for George Kurtz. Could be the one thing that's been missing this season from Lawson Aschenbach in the Black Dog Speed Shop, Chevrolet Camaro attack on a championship. This is a remarkable thing to say. He's going for his fifth. Yeah. That's but I tell you what, it will, it will make you lose a little bit of sleep. I know he's, uh, he's, he's <laughs> yeah. happy to have a good championship lead, but not getting a victory. You don't want to end up at that season bank where the, the championship comes. trophy that a race went. White flag. So they actually got around a little quicker than scoring thought. And uh, this will now be the final lap. And here, look at this now. There's a little pressure for Kurtz. He's yeah. got Parker Chase. Stacy's hanging in there as well. Good run nice for Nate today. Barky. Still right there in oh, seven. Chase got huge <laughs> speed through turn one there. Boy, oh boy, what a run. Looks to the inside. It's a matter who can get deeper into the brakes, into the keyhole. And McLaren working pretty well there. Yeah, and driven very well to be able to tuck it into line. Yes. When you're under pressure, it's really easy to break yourself up into the keyhole and run wide and open up that door for Parker. And then you can see that McLaren has some relatively solid straight line speed. Nate Stacy got a little bit of a run here. I just don't think that straight's quite long enough for him to really be in a position to try something. 
entertainment is really how this GTS class is uh, BOP in terms of that's the benchmark. They try and get everyone close to the Cayman. All right, as this group heads down toward Madness, that means our leader, Lawson Aschenbach, heading through Thunder Valley on this final lap. Here he comes, heading up for the last sequence of corners, this very quick blind approach left-hander, and now into the carousel. I'm sure he's inside that car going, come on, come on, let's get this one. Last turn, onto the front straight, and Chevrolet's GT4 Camaro wins at Mid-Ohio. Lawson Aschenbach and Black Dog get that little monkey off their back. Ian James, another podium in the oh, look at this run of the line. So, so close. Kurtz just grabs the fourth <laughs> position from Parker Chase. And Stacy rounds out the top six. Stacy was right there as well. He had a great run through that last corner. And yesterday's birthday boy at pole sitter, Harry Gottsacker, a podium as a pro. Not too bad there either. But for Lawson, you can just almost hear the relief <laughs> pouring out of that helmet right now. And uh, it was kind of a... You can see the two pros. Yeah. <laughs> Immediately out in the barbels, picking up a bit of rubber, making sure their right height is uh, clear of the minimums after the race. And the 0-4, George Kurtz, not only a win in AM and a point lead, but also he gets the VP Racing Fuels Hard Charger Award. That's most positions gained during the course of the race. Eight spots he made up. So that's a pretty remarkable Gained by Kurtz, and we're getting word that the Cadillac ATSV move of the race goes to Lawson Aschenbach for the start. And he just, I mean, he was.